All right. So, um, today I am going to cover um, using hand cards and combs on wool and mohair. Um, my name is Jessica Pack, and I'm one of the owners of Forever Growing. We make the spinny cubes. Um, but this month, we are um, going to be watching the fiber sale, so the raw wool sale. And earlier this month, I went through and I showed you how I um, wash fleece using the suent method. Um, so I posted after that video what it looked like after, you know, five days. And it looked pretty clean, and so I spread it out to dry in the sun. And this is what I got back. So I have some wool, and I have some mohair. And um, it turned out pretty clean. There's some big VM here and there. Um, but overall, it like comes apart easily, and it's, it's workable. So let me show you that. Um, Any time that you're going to be combing or carding fleece, you do want to make sure that it's clean. Clean doesn't necessarily mean doesn't have hay or vegetable matter in it. Clean means like there's not um, a lot of grease and dirt and gunky stuff. So in this wool that I washed, um, the reason that I'm saying it's clean is because I can pull it apart easily. I can see individual locks. Um, it doesn't feel dirty. It doesn't smell. Um, generally, overall, it seems like ready to spin. Okay, but there may still be little bits of hay in there. For the mohair... Um, what we have here is it is kind of loose and fluffy. You can see the individual locks in the lock structure there. Um, again, it's clean. It still has some VM. I don't know if you can see that in the light. I kind of tried to make it where it was see-through-ish. Um, but overall, you know, that's, that's ready to work with. Okay, and it should feel nice in your hand. So, clean fiber, we're going to play with wool and mohair, and we're going to see what that looks like um, with hand carters and combs. Now, my hand carters are very sad, and I am aware of this, but they still work. Um, last time that I, I um, did a, a demo like this, I did cover some alternative methods to hand cards and combs, but for this one we're going to stick with those. All right, hand cards. So on the hand cards, um, what we've got is um, what they call the, the cloth. So it's these kind of metal spikes, and those metal spikes are attached to a piece of cloth or leather and then attached to the wood part of the card. Um, some of them have curved backs, like this one. Some of them are straight. And then the way that they measure um, the size of your carters is what they call TPI, or teeth per inch. So um, I generally work with very fine mohair and um, things like that, so I tend to get things that have a higher number. Um, I think it's like 120 is like the standard for mohair. And then some of them go down, I think 80, maybe even lower, um, for coarser, coarser wool. But generally the ones I use are very fine. And the reason that I say that these are, are you know, a little wore out is you can see like some of the backing coming loose and I've broken the handle so we had to kind of supplement and fix it but you know they still work so 
Um, so when you're hand carding, um, right now you can see that I'm kind of sitting um, with my elbow up on the table. That's probably not going to be the best position to sit in. So you got to be mindful that you're going to need some elbow room. So let me do that. There we go. Now I think I can get, yeah, right like that. So, you know, make sure you're not going to hit nothing. Um, I have a tendency if I'm sitting next to someone, I'll end up elbowing them while I'm doing this. But, yeah, eh, it is okay. Um, so the first thing you want to do is grab just a, a small handful of fiber. So this is the wool fiber. And um, you kind of place them on the carter so that, like, the tips, the tip of the lock, is furthest away from your hand. So that's how I place them on the carter. Right like that. And you don't want it to be very thick. Um, you don't need a lot. Um, you also have the option of kind of raking it across and seeing what sticks. Um, I kind of prefer this way because I feel like I can get it more evenly and like I have a little more control over it. Um, and it helps me kind of straighten out those locks as we go through. Now this is going to get very, very fluffy as we go on. So what you start with is a tiny handful. By the time you get done prepping it, it gets uh, quite a bit bigger. Um, the volume increases. So I've, I've kind of loaded up my carter with those um, locks on it. And in my, I, I've kind of also kind of locked this one a little bit into my hip here so that I have a place to um, make pressure. And I'll start at the tip, just like you're brushing like, I don't know, bubble gum out of some hair. Um, start at the tip and work your way back. There we go. And you can see it's starting to um, fluff up some of those fibers. You can still see quite a bit of lumps and in individual locks. So I'm going back. I've got my elbow locked here. And I'm pulling this way. So I am doing my best um, to sit at a, a good, comfortable chair. Um, you know, good posture, that kind of thing. Um, but this helps me get some leverage, and it also helps keep my arms from getting tired. Um, because that way, you know, if you've got your arms up here, you've got to hold your arms up while you're carding. And that's just, you know, not comfortable. So I just try to kind of find the best body position for me. All right, so now you can see the difference those fibers are all kind of like straightened out. I don't see any major lumps, you know, so it, it kind of looks done to me. So at this point you could add more fiber to it um, or you could pull it off. So for the sake of a demo, I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Tim, how are we doing? Okay, just checking. All right, so there we go. That is pulled off of the hand card. Now in there, I can see a few kind of individual locks left. So I might want to card that again. And then let's see what it looks like on this one. Less fiber on this one. But it's definitely um, very, very fine. So at this point, you can kind of determine if it is suitable to spin. So just give it a test draw 
and add a little twist with your fingers and see if that feels nice for the kind of, of yarn that you want to make. And of course, if you want to uh, do a little pre-drafting, uh, that is a nice way to kind of judge if you think it's ready or not. Okay, so this is wool hand cards. Now, also with the hand cards, there's uh, mohair behaves just a little bit differently, um, but the principle is the same. So I'm kind of cleaning out my hand carders by running them backwards with each other. Um, and that makes it where I'm ready for the mohair. Okay, mohair, same thing. I'm going to load up my carter. There we go. Load up the carter so the tip is um, kind of hanging off the edge. Mohair has a really long staple. And so what I find a lot of times is that my mohair is a little bit longer than my carter. Um, and that's fine. Um, it'll still work. There we go. And again, running it through carters tends to make it grow a little bit. So I try not to overload. It's a lot easier to work with when you don't have a lot of material on the carter. And as you go and you build up your muscles for doing this, um, you'll get better and better at it. So starting on the edge again. Here we go. So this is a nice comparison point. Uh, so here is some of that wool, and here is some of the mohair. So the mohair is very shiny, right? And um, it also kind of behaves a little bit more like hair. This has curl kind of already built into it. The fibers aren't quite as straight as the mohair. All right. There we go. All right. So here is the mohair carded. Woo! Once through the carters. We can, and you can still see some individual locks. So if you want something that has a little bit of texture to it, that's kind of the, the, a good point um, to keep some of the texture in your draft, like that. But if you want, to have it a little smoother, um, there's nothing that says that you can't run it in again. And this time, you've kind of got a nice thinner layer that you can put on those cards. So here I have a little layer of mohair, very thin. I want to see what it spins like um, to have some of the wool mixed with some of the mohair. So that's what I'm going to try to do with the hand cards. See how blending those works. All right. So there we go. A little bit of the wool laid on the carter. I'm hoping it turns out a really lovely color too. Um, 
So we have like a natural white going on and a natural brown. The brown has like these hints of gray and red in it. It's really pretty. All right. So building up a little bit more. This is a mix now of the mohair and the wool. And we'll go ahead and pull that off. And if you can see, um, you know, those fibers are now kind of blended together. You've got a few streaks of the one color, but they've, they've unified kind of nicely. And I think um, we do a little bit of drafting. Um, you'll see that they've got kind of a neat, neat color, very fine, not a whole lot of, of lumps. And that's what I'm looking for when I want to do a really fine yarn. Again, if you want texture, um, you know, you don't, you don't card it quite as much. Um, but the more you card it, the more you align those fibers. Okay. Hand card. Next up is combs. All right. So when looking at combs, you can see that they are indeed very dangerous looking, and they are. They are very sharp. Okay, but you want to make sure that they're not rusty or that when you touch them or slide fiber on them that it's it's smooth. Um, it is possible if they get bent to bend uh, one of the spines back um, very gently and very carefully. Um, but after that, they do continue to bend. Um, so it's very important if you encounter resistance while using those. Um, that you not bend them. Okay, so for these what I like to do is, um, we'll start with some wool. I'll take a small handful of wool and I will kind of um, just stab it onto the, the comb kind of placing it on there. You can also let the comb grab it while you gently slide your hand um, across it. So right like that. See now here is a big lump and I don't want to hit a lot of resistance with that big lump. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out by hand and rerun it through. All right and again just use a little teeny tiny bit of fiber, like a handful, um, and not a big handful either, because these things are heavy, and after a while you will have like She-Hulk arms. Okay. It's true. So I'm, I'm kind of cross-hatching these um, comb so that I'm just catching the very edge of that wool and again I'm kind of holding some things up for the camera but you want to keep your body in a in a comfortable position you want to have you know room like you don't want to like hit your neighbor sitting next to you um, and you also want to make sure that if you swing that you've got a, a safe place for these sharp things to to land not in the leather couch or you know stuff like that and um, I like to kind of rotate um, the comb so like this one kind of stays put and this one is doing most of the the motion this way um, if you really want to work out, switch hands and try it. Um, it's awkward, but um, you'll definitely notice that you haven't quite used the muscles in the same, in the same manner. All right. So I'm working my way slowly all the way down 
to the, the other comb. And then when I flip it, I'm kind of working it the other direction. But the whole time, I am lining up those fibers. All right. So here we go. This is one pass through with the comb. And to me, I like to make it look like a little troll. All right. There we go. Here's the other one. And then we'll start going the other way. So you kind of switch um, switch combs and just repeat the process over again. See, now this time, even though we just combed it, right, um, I can feel a little bit of a, a knot there. So when you feel it kind of stick, um, just give it a kind of a gentle jiggle. And if it won't come through, back it up and just continue the process. Don't, don't force it. It's really hard not to try to force it, but it's kind of like untangling yarn. Like once you figure out that patience is the, the winner for untangling yarn, like you will win almost every time. There we go. Flipping it around again some more. Now, when you've done this enough time, to where, like, it feels um, smooth. It feels like you can just kind of get through it real easy. Uh, this one's about there. There we go. Yeah, right like that. So, you know, not a whole lot of resistance left. Not a whole lot to get through. You know, loop the little troll here. And pull it straight up. Now. Anything big, like sticky burrs or some thorns or stuff, is going to have been kind of captured by um, those combs. This one looks pretty good. I hardly see any, any vegetables on this one. So what I'll do is I'll set my comb down, and I want to turn it around so that when I place it, I'm placing the, the pointy part of the troll back on the combs and I'm like combing out the part that would have been like attached to his head like that and at this point um, the fiber may be loose enough to kind of want to pull out of the combs um, so I'm actually using my hand to hold on to the tip of the, the troll to make it work. So, you know, this is a very small example. This is just what was left in the comb. But, I mean, that is um, wool that is very, very unidirectional at this point. So if I was to draft this, I would be able... Um, to have a very kind of shiny and tight yarn. All right. Now, this one. Still working on this one. Haven't given up. It's just the other side of the, the sheep here. So working my way through that. Another thing that I think is interesting about the combs, um, I work in front of a computer quite a bit um, during the day, and this really kind of helps me um, move my shoulders and stuff after kind of been stuck in one spot for most of the day. There we go. So, make a little troll. Pull them off of the carters there, or off, off of the combs. And then you can check out um, that 
side is where the VM is going to live. Here is the nice combed side. So I'm going to flip it over and put it back. Oops, wrong direction. Flip it over and put it back down on the comb. There we go. And then I can put my hand here to hold it in place and continue combing. And every time that you do this, it's going to get a little smoother. It's going to get a little finer. Um, and again, where you stop with it is up to you. Um, every time you do this, you are removing VM, if it's in there. You are um, straightening those fibers. Um, you are, you know, the, the, the key to good spinning, in my opinion, is having good fiber to work with. From the washing all the way to the, the combing and the carding, you want it to be um, ready for you to use. And I just think this is beautiful. All right. One last thing. I want to put a little bit of mohair with the wool and show you what it looks like when um, that gets combed together. So I've got um, some wool. I've got some of the mohair. Nope, that's the mix. There we go. That's mohair. No, it's not. That's also the mix. I bet you I used it all. All right, we're going to add a little bit of mohair then. All right, so there's some wool, and there's some of the mohair. All right, so two very distinct kind of colors. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit more of the wool on top. So wool, mohair, wool sandwich on my comb. And then I'll just work through it. There we go. This is going to turn out pretty. Then I'm switching hands, doing it again. All right, pull these off of here. I'm going to put these two trolls together here. Um, so on this side, I still have a little bit of lock structure in both the wool and the mohair. But the colors have blended nicely. Um, a little bit uneven and mottled, which I really like. Um, but we'll comb it one more time on the back side and see what it looks like. Oh, I grabbed a big chunk. Put them back. There we go. All right. All right, so a giant piece of hay fell out of that. That, you know, I didn't know it was hiding in there. All right, here it is. Taking that out. And, you know, I kind of like it. It's got a little bit of a striped effect. I'm sure the more that you um, combed it together, um, the more you would see that. I see like one kind of lock that didn't get broken up well, so I would probably card that one again in another batch. But if I was looking for texture, I would certainly leave that one in there. All right, so that is just some, some basics of wool and mohair with combs and carters. Um, I really hope that everybody has fun at the raw fleece sale um, and happy shopping. <laughs>